This is a, a memorable occasion uh, for each of us. Uh, Seventy years ago, 12 nations banded together in a historic experiment in security and democracy. We signed what was called the Washington Treaty, establishing NATO. As I mentioned last night at the reception, President Truman said that we hope to create a shield against aggression. Uh, it's worked. That unique shield we have carried these 70 years is made strong because of our belief in deterrence, not aggression. It is made strong because of our democratic underpinnings. It is made strong through our collective defense commitment as enshrined in Article 5, to which we all recommit today. And we've rightly sought peace through strength here in NATO. We must continue to do so, especially in this new era of great power competition from Russia, from China, and the Islamic Republic of Iran. But there's a second anniversary of significance to the West that we celebrate this year, too, the crumbling of the Iron Curtain. To borrow a phrase from Abraham Lincoln, 1989 marked a new birth of freedom. That anniversary is intimately connected to NATO. For 40 years, the NATO alliance was a bulwark against communist expansion in Europe. We were ready to invoke Article 5 at any moment if the Soviets poured through the Fulda Gap in the way that we did after 9-11. No military alliance in the world can remotely do what we do. No alliance can remotely match the power of the nations represented here today. Uh, we should all be proud. These are great accomplishments. But we must adapt our alliance to confront emerging threats too, whether that's Russian aggression, uncontrolled migration, cyber attacks, threats to energy security, Chinese strategic competition, including technology and 5G, and many other issues that jeopardize our people's ideals and our collective security. These are real challenges, to be sure. And now is not the time to repeat tired excuses that our citizens don't support increased defense spending or security spending. Each nation has a duty to make the case to our people. We as leaders have a duty to make the case to our citizens about why this work, why these resources are important to keep not only our own countries, but our alliance strong. This work to convince our citizens of the importance, the relevance, the intrinsic centrality of this institution falls to each of us and the other leaders of our countries. It's a key step in confronting these threats head on.